Yeah. For our first community conversation, we're joined by Dr. Linda Duska, gynecologic oncologist with UVA Health. She's sitting down with Aaron. Thank you, Steve. Dr. Duska, thanks for coming in today. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. A very important topic on the table today. We're talking about endometrial cancer. Um, so what are the main risk factors for endometrial cancer? So just let's start off with a little bit of a definition. So endometrial cancer is cancer that arises in the lining of the uterus or the womb, mm -hmm. right? And interestingly, of all the solid tumors, endometrial cancer is increasing in incidence and in death rates, which is really weird because the other solid tumors are not doing that. And we think that's because of two of the risk factors, one of which is age. We know our population is aging. Mm -hmm. So as we get older, we're more likely to develop endometrial cancer, but also, Endometrial cancer is related to weight. So as we see more individuals who are either overweight or obese, we're seeing a higher rate of endometrial cancer. And in fact, it, the rate goes up with each um, decile of body mass index. So it's kind of interesting. Wow. But there are some other really important risk factors to talk about. So one of them, we know this cancer is related to hormones and specifically a hormone imbalance. So if you have too much estrogen, which is one of the uh, women hormones mm -hmm. and not enough progesterone, the endometrium will be stimulated and form a cancer. So you might ask, what situation might that happen in? So in a premenopausal woman or a woman who's still cycling, that might happen if she is having an ovulatory or no ovulation cycle. So mm -hmm. for example, polycystic ovarian syndrome, where the ovary is producing a lot of estrogen, but there's not enough progesterone to combat it um, in the endometrium. Another example would be for a postmenopausal woman, if she's taking estrogen, but she's not taking progesterone, that would stimulate the endometrium. Mm. Um, or in the case of being overweight, our fat cells, and this is crazy, but our fat cells make hormones and one of them is estrogen. Mm. And so we think that's why being overweight puts you at increased risk. There's one other really important risk factor to mention and that's family history. If you have a family history of colorectal or endometrial cancer, you might be at increased risk to develop endometrial cancer. Wow, I just I just learned a lot there. Good. There's a lot so of information, glad. yeah. <laughs> and what can women do to reduce their risk? Okay, so there are, obviously we can't get younger. I wish we could, yes. but that's not something <laughs> that we can do. So one thing we can do is manage this hormonal imbalance that I was talking about. So in the case of the premenopausal woman who might have PCOS as an example, mm -hmm. she can take birth control pills. That will regulate the hormones and solve the overstimulation of the endometrium problem. Another thing that works great is the progesterone IUD. It's not just a birth control method. It also treats the endometrium with progestin and prevents this hormonal imbalance. Wow. Another way we can fix the hormonal imbalance is by losing weight. That is something that we can do and having a more active lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. And so being more active, exercising more, managing diabetes, losing weight, all of those things can decrease your risk. And finally, getting back to this family history thing that I talked about, if you do have a significant family history and you talk to your doctor, maybe you're eligible for genetic counseling or genetic testing, and if you are identified to have a genetic syndrome, you might want to consider having some type of uh, prophylactic surgery or managing that in some way to prevent cancer, like you know, more careful monitoring. Right. Lots of good information there, Dr. Duffy. Sorry, I'm a fast talker. So. No, no, it was a lot of good information and I'm just thankful that we could have you come in today and break, break all that down for us. So thank you so much for coming in. Sure. And we'll see you next time. Okay, great. <laughs>